M19 is an American self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, which was one of the most difficult vehicles for me to play, because it is placed in the worst place anything with low penetrating shells could be. Battle waiting where almost every vehicle is heavy tank. In this video I will review M19 and share a couple of basic principles when engaging enemies whose armor you cannot penetrate. M19 has two types of ammunition. First of them are high explosive fragmentation. They are the best at doing what the vehicle was designed for, destroying air targets. Caliber of 40mm is quite large, so when such shell explodes after hitting a fighter, you can be pretty sure that the distance that plane can fly is roughly the same as its altitude. The hardest thing when fighting planes is to hit them, as rate of fire is slower compared to other SPAs with smaller caliber guns. Nevertheless, when planes are flying straight towards you and accuracy is not an issue, shell's damage plays vital role because it allows to destroy planes instantly before they have a chance to shoot enough bullets towards you. Another type of ammunition, armor-piercing traces. These will be used to fight tanks. Sadly, in most cases that is a terrible experience. Here's why. Shell penetrates up to 71mm of armor if you are shooting opponents point blank. That might be ok at lower tiers, or even at higher tiers, for example lower parts could be easily penetrated if their side is exposed. But at battle rating 5.0, you mostly meet second world war tanks with a lot of armor. For example if you look at KV-1 or IS-1 heavy tanks, which you will meet very often, their side armor is thicker than penetration of your projectiles. Though in War Thunder SPAs are not very useful if they just stand on respawn waiting for planes, so you will have to go and fight tanks in order to capture points. This video will be full of footage that shows enemies being destroyed by M19, but keep in mind that it is possible because of positioning, knowing opponent's weak spots and by a very large margin, luck. The first rule is the most important. Do not engage enemy tanks head on. Unless that's a light tank or another SPA, which are exceptions, assume that your shells cannot penetrate them frontally. In other cases, don't move and wait until they show their sights or drive past you if they cannot be penetrated at all. M19 is not very difficult to hide since it has an usual open turret which makes it lower, so easier to hide behind low objects. Players are also on the lookout for usual tank silhouettes, so anything that looks more differently attracts less attention. The only time you should engage them frontally is when they already saw you and fight is inevitable. When there is nowhere to hide, your only chance to survive is to destroy their gun, so you could safely approach them and finish or run away from that area. When someone is already pointing their gun at you, it's mostly a matter of luck if you can manage to destroy their gun barrel. Since luck is difficult to control, avoiding frontal engagements is the safest option. Instead, you can control your positioning. And here your opponent's armor plays against them. As M19 is lightweight vehicle, you can accelerate quite quickly. On average, you will reach speeds of up to 40 kph, while maximum speed is 56. If you took this vehicle at the beginning of a match, you can be sure that you will be among the first ones to reach the middle of a map. And even if there is someone else already, that means they are lightly armored, so shouldn't be a problem even for your gun, especially since M19 has significant rate of fire. After that, you can take a position where you expect enemy tanks to pass. Ideally, they should appear with their sides facing towards you, and you should have the ability to disengage towards your allies if things go wrong. You might even have two ways to disengage. That is possible because of backward speed, 23 kph. It is high. Not many vehicles at this battle rating can reach that. It allows you to drive longer distances backwards without wasting time to turn the hull around. 
since M19 gets in tough situations often, backward speed is extremely handy. Second rule is knowing your opponents. In a tank game that is required anyway, but in case of M19, basics will not be enough as you have to learn about side armor as well. As a rule of thumb, shoot everything that is not angled. Shells should hit the armor under 90 degrees. Even if opponent's side armor is quite weak, but angled, it will be impossible for you to penetrate. For example, Soviet medium tanks T-34 have 45mm thick armor plates, but they are difficult to pierce since they are sloped. Another rule of thumb, armor closer to the ground, behind tracks, is usually thinner. For example, when fighting tigers, the only armor plates that have less armor than your penetration is the bottom hull sides. Even then you have to be relatively close and still have to make sure that shells hit under 90 degrees angle. T-34 or Panthers also can be penetrated here easier, just the reason for that is that there is no constructural slope. Plates are vertical to the ground. When shooting side plates, keep in mind that if enemies start turning, that will increase the angle at which your shells are hitting them. Try to use your already mentioned speed to move around them to maintain an optimal angle. M19 has unusual reload. Each gun is reloaded every half second, so despite in-game it shows that there are belts containing 8 projectiles for each barrel, you can shoot continuously until weapon overheats or you run out of ammunition. That means in practice you are never caught in between reloads. That is also handy when switching shell types when engaging either ground or air targets. Survivability of M19 is never the same. Sometimes it survives many shots, sometimes it gets one shotted. There are four factors that have influence here. It definitely helps that it has huge crew of six members. It also helps that there are two groups, two in a hull and the rest in a turret. These groups are separated by the engine that in many cases absorbs the majority of shrapnel, so only one group gets killed by APHE shells. On the other hand, there are factors that are not influenced by quantity of crew members, hull break and ammunition detonation. Just like all SPAs with more or less significant caliber, crew is surrounded by ammunition. In case of M19, they are surrounded literally. So you can never predict what happens after you get hit. Since this is an open top vehicle, it is very vulnerable for any sort of damage, including machine guns. Even if opponent's tank has its main gun destroyed, everyone in M19's turret can still be killed by small caliber machine gun fire. The same applies for planes. Once you start to fight planes, your tracers will attract their attention. If one attacker is not a big issue for SPAA, you will lose when two fighters attack you simultaneously. No surprise that SPAA has elevation of 85 degrees. No one above you can hide from your fire. But depression of only minus 5 means that everyone below will be unreachable. Though it is not like you were about to play M19 hull down anyways. It belongs in cities where you can get close to your opponents, so gun's depression is not so important. Meanwhile, high turret's rotation speed of 40 degrees per second will be useful in any situation fighting all types of vehicles. In arcade, it's almost impossible to approach opponent's tank's side unnoticed. And that range, even light tanks might take some effort and time to destroy, so M19 turns into a pure anti-aircraft vehicle. It is quite good at dealing with planes thanks to a leading indicator, but even then, this SPAA becomes useful only a few minutes into the match when players get to control first planes. So it could make sense to take it later to provide cover from planes, or do not take it at all as it has little use when it comes to capturing points in arcade. M19 was difficult to play because there are not many lightly armored tanks at this battle rating. 
The most popular tank destroyer is on your team. Japan is not very popular nation. France and Italy have significant gap at these battle ratings, so the majority of opponents will be Soviets and Germans who are known for their armor. Nevertheless, that felt like a positive experience, a challenge that requires different approach. I would rate the vehicle 5 double shots out of 10. Its primary use is SPAA and it's quite good at it. But whenever you are forced to go and fight ground vehicles, you will be at significant disadvantage. It is mostly worth using it if enemies are dominating in air or when you have no respawn points left for anything else and that is the only vehicle you can take thanks to its low cost.